How do nurses and clinicians access and use evidence-based best practice information? At the point of care, with Lippincott Procedures and Lippincott Advisor, software within the Lippincott Solutions suite, your staff can instantly access the latest evidence-based procedural guides and clinical decision support references at the bedside to help improve quality of care and patient outcomes. At the point of learning, Lippincott Blended Learning is designed to support the rapid deployment of content on need-to-know information that gets staff quickly trained and immediately moved on to productivity. And with Lippincott Learning, you can validate staff competency and support a culture of learning with a growing library of evidence-based multidisciplinary content which supports CE requirements and certification review needs. At the point of reference, your staff can link from the Lippincott Solutions software to more in-depth information found in Ovid, the Joanna Briggs Institute or JBI, Lippincott journals and books, ultimately improving practice, research and quality improvement. Now let's see Lippincott Solutions in action. A patient is admitted to the medical floor with a diagnosis of heart failure with impaired left ventricular function and systolic heart failure. What exactly constitutes impaired ventricular function and systolic heart failure? Go to Lippincott Advisor at the point of care to brush up on the pathophysiology behind heart failure. And you can also find the most up-to-date heart failure guidelines and definitions in Advisor. With a patient in pulmonary edema and respiratory distress, a BiPAP, a furosemide IV bolus, and a STAT chest X-ray are ordered. What are the proper steps for applying a BiPAP mask? Review the step-by-step -step instructions for applying a BiPAP mask in Lippincott procedures at the point of care before sending your patient to the ICU. But wait, something is wrong. The patient begins to decompensate. A furosemide infusion is ordered. The nurse starts the furosemide infusion immediately. But she wonders, what is more effective for decompensation? an infusion of furosemide or a bolus. A quick search in Ovid and the JBI database at point of reference reveals an evidence summary for heart failure decompensation. When she has a bit more time, she can also go to Lippincott Blended Learning at the point of learning for a quick lesson on heart failure to increase nursing knowledge of risk factors, common symptoms, and nursing interventions in caring for patients with heart failure. She finds that continuous infusion appears to achieve greater diuresis and has a better safety profile compared with intermittent bolus doses. In the end, your patient's condition has improved and you prevented further decompensation and complications associated with heart failure because you implemented evidence-based best practice interventions from Lippincott Solutions. Standardize care, save time, Streamline workflows and improve outcomes with Lippincott Solutions. Learn more on LippincottSolutions.com. With Lippincott Solutions as the foundation, Walters Kluwer provides you with the latest evidence when and where you need it, when you have to be right.